Red Dead Redemption seems to be leaning into the details. Could this be an issue? Hello and welcome to Triangle Square, the PlayStation podcast. I am your host, Brett, back and alongside me, Mr. Saw Bridges, bringing you lucky episode <clears throat> 78, right? Uh, that feels right. We're going to roll with it. Okay. Uh, if you don't know who we are, we are a PlayStation-based podcast. We, po- we post every Monday at 10 a.m. PST and 12 p.m. CST on YouTube in video format, where you can always have a conversation with us in the comments below. We'd like to hear what you guys think. If you watch us on there or watching this on there and like what we're doing, uh, give, us a, a, give us a subscribe and hit the notification bell so it'll actually tell you when the episodes go live every Monday, bare minimum, and then we do uh, more interspersed between. You can find us in audio format only on podcast services. Still working on that Spotify. Um, and you can also find us on Twitter at Triangle sqrd on patreon uh under nartech gaming just so you know that's our host thing if you watch this on youtube you'll know that uh and of course you can always email us anything you'd like at triangle squared podcast.com uh at gmail.com sorry uh spelled out exactly as it sounds triangle squared podcast at gmail.com uh we post in our facebook group as well uh and that was minted by josh and blake we will continue to give you guys credit for that thank you for the uh for the idea and yeah, getting it kind of going for us uh, and that's for you know slightly different conversation uh, where it's a little easier to follow or you can follow the hecticness that goes on in the Discord, but it's fun. It um, is very fun. So you can find the Discord link down in the description below. And outside of that, I think it's time to move along into what have you been playing this week, Saul? A lot of Destiny 2. A lot of it. I saw that you said it took your life back over. It did. Uh, so when you say that, I mean, you are you playing as much as you were when the game first launched? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Forsaken's really has done really really well, and this story was pretty good. It's about as what you would expect from a typical like forty dollar expansion. It's you know about two two hours long. Wait, uh, it's forty? I think so. Yeah, or maybe it's Ooh. twenty, and then the other. Well, it's, I think it's, I thought it was thirty. I think it's thirty, and then the other two are twenty. But then you could buy the one thing that comes with all of them. Uh, I don't remember. I got it. Uh, I thought it was actually you are right. I think it is forty. I think I think it is forty though. I think it's twenty nine or thirty nine. Okay, but it's one of the two. But yeah, it added a lot of cool features into it, and, uh, and Destiny is always kind of fun yet overwhelming when you're trying to catch up on stuff that you uh, didn't know was in the game or that has been added to the game. And I've actually been playing it on PC this weekend. Uh, I started playing it on PC starting Friday morning, and I've been playing kind of through on just a regular Titan character. And your characters and don't transfer, correct? No, I didn't don't. think so. So I'm having fun, though, on that, because it is a completely different game on PC than it is on PS4. But really, that's all really been it. Like, I started playing Destiny 2 on Monday, and I really, like, I played Destiny 2 like three, four days this week, but that's all I've really played. Uh, I was going to start up another uh, playthrough of Hollow Knight, but then I realized it comes out this week on ps4 so i'm not going to worry about that Man, at all you're right the 25th yeah well it's so, tuesday yeah nice. the void heart edition so i'm not going to worry about that at all uh, i'm just going to pick it up when it comes out on tuesday i think uh it might be a friday release but we'll we'll find out in the drop but that's kind of it it's gonna be the 25th so it should be a tuesday release okay. alongside time spinner for vita gotcha which is good yeah. i got my vita up charged ready to go i wonder if i got my vita in the mail yet richard <clears throat> richard we'll see but uh, what about you? What have you been playing this week? Uh, well, Donovan came into town, my homie. Um, got to see him for a little bit. He picked up my uh, my Monster Hunter World PlayStation. Um, and while he had it here and we were kind of getting stuff set up, he had never played Warframe. So we were like, ah, oh, screw it. You know, it was, it, we went and ate and it downloaded. So he's like, okay, I have, you know, we'll play it while other stuff's uh, downloading, installing and whatnot. Um, and he was really surprised by it. Every time I play Warframe, I'm, I have so much fun with it. I just want other people to play it with me. Um, Donovan was surprised. He said, "I don't know if he can be playing it now because he's got a lot of backlog stuff to do." Which I get. He's like, he didn't get to finish God of War. He's got like not finished a Monster in the World. A lot of games he was in the middle of whenever he lost having a PlayStation. So I get that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I'm hoping that we can get back to playing Warframe because I played a lot even by myself, uh, and I actually played multiplayer. Still fun. A little different and weird, and I don't quite understand why it pulled different loadouts and stuff, and if there's a separate loadout, uh, but it's still the same one that we had, but it obviously benefits from the stuff. What, what I don't know is, I think that you still have all your rank stuff there, so I think it's like, uh, isn't there a form of Destiny where you can play PvP with your, uh, with your armor rating counting? 
Yeah, your is light it trials level. or yeah trials and Iron Banner they use uh, level advantage. So okay. that means that if you're like level five hundred and ten and you're, you're gonna be strong, like five, yeah, if somebody's five eighty, you're gonna get your you know your floor mopped up with you, which which was happening to me and Joe quite a lot this weekend because Iron <laughs> Banner came out and I'm like five oh eight and he's like five ten. My character's like because I haven't played probably like two eighty. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> The, the new level, the new level cap is six hundred, and the that's ridiculous. What, whatever it's called, soft level cap's like five hundred. So, from five hundred to six hundred isn't is like a grind in a way. Yeah, but hey, for those real quick before you finish, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna say for those that are playing Destiny Two on PS4, let me know if you are interested in starting a clan. Um, all of our former PS4 members, except two guys, they all went to PC. So now we don't have six people to do raids with. Well, it would be super cool to make a clan that is triangle squared and have a PS4 clan for Destiny 2 for people who like to play. Pretty sure Jeff still plays. I think I saw him online the other day, but I might be wrong about that. I think you're right. Um, yeah. But yeah, y'all let us know on Twitter or Discord if you want, all want to play. And uh, if we get enough people, it's certainly plausible we could do a raid. Okay, cool. Well, we'll definitely pull that off. See what else have I played? I uh, finished up and beat Hyperlight Drifter. Rolled credits on it, so probably not. What you, beat. What'd you think? Very good. Very fun. Um, still, you know, it's one of those games where you're just trying to your best to grasp straws over what just happened yeah. completely. And I think I kind of have an idea. Uh, you can. You don't have to confirm or deny if you didn't play it. Then you don't. We we can talk about it after. Yeah, we'll talk if about it. If you after. know more, yeah, um, we'll just do that. But I think I kind of have an idea of the way the game shows you stuff versus the way that you actually play it out. Um, In a way, yeah, you're you're correct if you if it's the what I'm thinking of. Okay. Anyway, uh, rolled credits on that. I didn't get to go back to Tales of Berseria. It wasn't gri- it wasn't really gripping me when I played it the other day. Anyway, uh, which I think that was before the last episode when we recorded. Uh, it didn't really hit me right. I don't know. I, there's something about, like I said, I just I want the next Tales game to really finally try and move forward with design to where they're trying to do something. I get that they're budget RPGs, but the thing is, other budget JRPGs have come out this generation and still had better game design than this, where you have more massive areas and they're not just small. And I get that that's, to an extent, it's also just the, the Tales charm that they've had for so long. But you know... I don't know that I'd necessarily love playing the same Final Fantasy in the same engine with the same graphics for over and over and over again. It, I know that the story changes, but eventually the engagement of your mind throughout fights and stuff starts to kind of be like, okay. And then you also just start to see the age when other stuff's coming around it. So, you know, those bad animations and stuff come up and it's kind of like, well, I hope that they can really finally change engines open up a little bit more of what's going on in the world and give me more wide expanses, somewhat like Nier Automata did, which is another budget game uh, that did really well because they chose smart design choices to where the game doesn't have to look beautiful, but it can look better than what the Tales games usually do, normally because of the really stiff animations. Uh, But I'm I'm trying not to be too hard on it. I want to go back to it and hope that the story grabs, grasps me and then I can kind of keep going forward in that way. But I haven't had a huge pulling for it. Um... So let's see, what else have I played? Uh, Batman Arkham City, because I had a huge urge, like just yearning in my soul to go back and play it after playing Spider-Man. And I think it's, I think it came from the fact that when we were doing the Spider-Man impressions and when we were even talking, uh, you know, off video about things that we did and didn't like about Spider-Man or really things that we liked and things that we thought they could have done better. I used Batman as a, or Arkham City specifically actually as a, example alongside infamous second son and when i was going through it you know i wanted to be like am i using am i remembering it too fondly because it's been a long time since i've played it and am i am i being unfair to spider-man by comparing it to a game that maybe doesn't actually hold up um and i know that you kind of do it based off of the feeling that you have when you're playing it at the time but either way it comes down to arkham city is still very pretty for it to be based off of a ps3 uh, game the ps4 version looks good um <clears throat> and they're on sale it's still a great game yeah that's why i even bought it i've been wanting to, to play it and it was now. 7.99 for one and two and then you can get night for 7.99 by itself so, yeah. i find it interesting Pretty that origins price. never made it to ps4 yeah, that is kind of weird. But um, I heard a lot of pro- not like mechanical like problems or technical it was just problems. samey, but it was a good game. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm, you I'm know. curious why. Uh, but still, going into real quick on Batman, the more I'm playing it, I'm probably about halfway through it right now because I've just really been wanting to play it, and it's been raining so much here, I can't do much else. Uh, so I've been playing a lot of it, and the game holds up, man. And it does. It, I knew it would. Here's here's the thing. 
what it's shown me is two things, uh, and this is partially to both games' credit, Spider-Man's and Batman's. Uh, they are they they are so similar in in so many ways that what it really comes down to. I know a couple of people have issues with Batman because they don't like him as a character or whatever, and they prefer Spider-Man. That's great. If you like Batman and you like Spider-Man as a character and you like the Batman games, you're going to like the Spider-Man game. If you didn't like Batman because of the characters, but you like the gameplay, you're going to like Spider-Man. The thing is that they're so similar that the only real difference comes from the fact that the characters themselves are differently. So yeah, web powers are slightly different, even though the grapple does somehow like sometimes mimic it. And even though you don't swing when you're traversing across the city and you're doing the dive bomb and pull up, that's very similar to what you do in Spider-Man anyway, when you want to increase speed, Yeah, they feel so similar that it just comes down to what character you prefer. If you don't like both of them, you're going to like Spider-Man. Even if you didn't like Batman, as long as the core gameplay idea works for you. So the gameplay holds up. Uh, it does go into the fact that maybe Spider-Man didn't innovate on anything, but it totally used everything that it, it, it got from other games, what it needed and used it mostly in a fantastic way. Um, it's just weird. I've heard a couple people, and this is going to be just more to address Liam. I heard Liam was like, well, Batman as a character is so boring, has no personality. I think Kiki said the same thing. But here's where the differences are in my mind between the two. Uh, I feel like in Spider-Man, the personality that you're really going for and the one that you pull for and like is in Spider-Man. Uh, and But most of the villains don't have a lot of personality. They're kind of flat and one note-ish. Not completely, but... You know, for the most part, besides maybe Doc Ock, Mr. Negative, they try, but it uh-huh. goes different ways. Uh, but with those things being said, it's it's a flip situation in Batman. Batman is very cold and, and calculated, and he doesn't have a lot of personality, but all of the other side people do. Yeah, the Joker do. has got more personality than anybody else in the game even needs. Right. And then Catwoman's got a, a lot of personality and she exudes his personality. So when you actually start entering in all these other people, and of course Two-Face, Two-Face by the nature of his character has got personality because he's at two, war yeah, with himself. Uh, Penguin is obviously very eccentric and, and crazy. So you make up for it in other places. Whereas, you know, the thing is in Spider-Man, I never cared and they never really gave you time to care about Ryan though. And stuff like that. Like we were talking about in Arkham city, you get a lot of time with penguin and you, and you have a real like feeling as to why you want to go after him in the first place. Uh, there's a reason to go after him. You end up going with freeze and stuff like that. They introduce and give you way more time and way more care with these villains so that, and then they also reintroduce them later so that you always constantly feel like you're getting time with them and they're trying to change up the way you play the game with each one. And that's, where I'm hoping again this was a sequel I'm hoping that Spider-Man does the same thing with its sequel it's going to be great I love it I love the idea Spider-Man is awesome Uh, I'm glad that Arkham City holds up as much as it does but that's pretty much it I haven't played anything else I'm very 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 tempted to get Far Cry 3 um, on sale because it's seventeen ninety nine right now on the Flash sale. No, not worth it Uh, I don't know I I love that game though man you can go get it at GameStop for like PS3 and it's the same game oh man I mean I never got the platinum though, and I don't really want to play it on PS3 right now. I can just play it on PS4, and it'll be a little bit better. I mean, you know, yeah. it just comes down to because I never played it on PC. If I would have played it on PC, I probably wouldn't get it because there really would be no point. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but who knows? We'll see. Being able, well, when I say getting the platinum too, the PS3 version had online. This one doesn't. You don't have to worry about online trophies that are stupid. So who knows? We will see if I cave in and get it. I don't want. I feel weird playing just a bunch of old games because there's a lot of stuff coming. So I might. I might not just because of time trying to divvy up time. Uh, but anyway, Saul, you want to go ahead and move into the drop? Sure thing. So for those that don't know, drop is this week's PlayStation rele- uh, releases across all boards. First up on the list, we have Air Missions Hind for PS4, The Cat and the Coop for PS4, Cat Astronauts for PS4, Creed Rise to Glory for PSVR. It actually looks okay. I don't know if you've seen gameplay on it. Mm. It doesn't look as bad as I thought a licensed Rocky game would look. Hmm. No. Take I... from that what you will. <laughs> we have uh, Crypt Tract for PS4. We have Dakar 18 for PS4. <laughs> is <Dark>. it? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's funny because I'm sure Dakar means something, but it's like, it almost looks like it's like Dakar 2018, and there's just oh, a car on it. It's I'm just pretty sure I see a something. goofy name. Yeah, South America. Uh, Dark Eclipse for PSVR. Art for that looks really, really cool. Yes, it does. We have Deployment for PSVR. FIFA 19 for PS4, Freaky Awesome for PS4, The Grand Museum VR for PSVR, Hollow Knight Void Heart Edition for PS4. Beautiful. Me and uh, Brett are both really excited for that. And that's only digitally. The physical version comes out next year, sadly. Yeah. 
Uh, we have Jack and Jill DX for PS4 and PS Vita, a cross-buy title. We have Life is Strange 2 Episode 1 for PS4. Metal Max Xeno for PS4. Perception Remastered for PS4. Pilot Sports for PS4. Pitter Pot for PS4. Punchline for PS4 and PS Vita, not a cross-buy title. Revenant Dogma for PS4 and PS Vita, that is a cross-buy title. Think of the Children for PS4. This is the Police 2 for PS4. Time Spinner for PS4 and PS Vita. I know Ooh, Brett's looking forward to that. Looks great. Toon War for PS4. And last up on the list, we have Valkyria Chronicles 4 for PS4. So I know a couple of people that are really waited with bated breath on that game. Like, I get it. You know, it's been so long since the Valkyria Chronicles series has really been around outside of the one remaster they've done. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be interesting to see how that game performs. Uh, yeah. And actually, that, that's a. That, did you say PS4 and Vita, right? No. It was just PS4 just this time PS4. around? Okay. Um, what would you say the game you're most excited for on that list is? Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. Without, it's it's without either Hollow Knight or Time Spinner. It's going to depend on which one pulls pulls me in more. Hollow Knight. They're both very similar. More. So Hollow, Hollow Knight is guaranteed to pull you in more. But here's the problem. It, it's not really. It's not a problem. It's a solution. Thankfully, they're not both on PS4. I can divvy oh, my yeah. mind up to where I. Well, I mean, they are, but I'm not playing them both on PS4. Right. What I should say. You're playing Time, Time Spinner will be my Vita game, right. and I can break up. And in my mind, it's easier for me to break up playing two of a similar type game when one is on a slightly different control scheme. Of course, yeah. And, and a different, one's a handheld. Too, yeah, so it feels anywhere. differently. So, you know, I'm going to do that. And whenever I go to bed, I'm going to start doing my hour before bed every night minimum, uh, watching either something on repeat like I normally do and just playing that and having fun with that. And then Hollow Knight will be my glue to the PS4 game. Uh, I'm excited means I need to hurry up and get through Batman. Yeah. Which I'm doing fine on Batman. I actually may aim for the platinum on Batman. But. Interesting. Uh, I would have never thought to do that on those games. Oh, those Riddler trophies are just a pain. Yeah, that's exactly why. So, Brett, uh, why don't you go ahead and lead us into the news? All right, let's see. News is actually quite mm, involved this week, so we'll get through that. Um, pretty interesting stuff, though. First thing up, and I know that Saul was a little like, huh, and we had people on our Discord saying the same thing. It was an interesting move, but Devil May Cry 5 uh, has been revealed to have microtransactions that can be used to upgrade characters, similar to how they added them into Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, which I did not know prior to looking into this. Uh, players can purchase red orbs, and if I remember, red orbs are actually just used to give you... Is, is it red orbs are exactly your experience, or do you crush them to get experience? Uh, it's been a while since I played Devil Red May Cry. Red orbs are pretty much like they're, souls. Yeah, they're the experience themselves right that's what i thought uh so you can do that um it, saul didn't know either that the devil may cry 4 special edition which is the ps4 remaster for that game included this option did not know that how do you all. feel about it it's uh, I, I don't it's one of those things that's like it's single player so like you could do all you want why does it yeah why yeah. Do, it shouldn't matter to us that it's yeah, pay to it's, win because you're not paying to win over me you're just paying to beat the game potentially. right it's, it's not my it's not my um like problem that I'm going to worry about because I'm not going to do it, but it is not a cool business move. Like I don't, I don't applaud a business for this. I'm not going to defend them per se, but I'm just going to say that it's not something I'm going to do. So it's not something I really care to argue with. I think it's a non-issue for me because yeah. of the fact that it doesn't affect anyone outside of the person spending their money for it, which if they want to more power to you, you know? Yeah. Why does it really matter? It's kind of where I leave it. Uh, but it is an interesting move. And I wonder how many more single player games we're going to see doing this. Um, which, because you saw it in, you saw some microtransactions affect single player aspects of other games that do have online aspects. Uh, one of the perfect examples of that is EA's uh, Need, Need for Speed Payback, which I love the game, every bit of it, except for the fact of the way that they changed car customization from your uh, engine spec setup. And the way they did that is that they were all random parts, and <clears throat> you would roll and basically you'd get a random part and. You had to go through and buy certain ones and you had to buy it with a currency that you could get by paying for something else and you buy a chance to roll your own currencies. Now, of course, they made it to where you could still get everything from playing the game, but it made it way more complicated and slower than it should have been to try and get the car exactly where you wanted it. It was a little bit more luck-based. Um, and that wasn't fun and I didn't like that because I get adding that into an online aspect if it's going to matter there. And I guess it does because you carry your car over with its current specs over to that. It's just, I don't know, I didn't like the way it was set up. And uh, I'm glad that that's not the way microtransactions are working in the... Um, we were talking about playing the demo for, which I did get to play, by the way. Uh, that's something I played this week. Um, 
her Forza Horizon uh, oh, yeah. 4. There's a fun uh, demo. I'm glad that they don't have that yeah. um, going for it. because Super fun demo. Racing is just not as... Uh, definitely street racing style games like that, like arcade uh, racing games aren't as prevalent as they used to be. So when you do play them, you want every single one that you play to not have... Not be weighting you down with stupid stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. So... Yeah. Uh, I agree. Anyway, next up, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and I'm curious as your thoughts on this, has been the center of some complaints from fans as the game is set to announce with only, uh, set to release sorry, with only 11 multiplayer maps, seven of which are new, four of which are old remakes, or remakes of older maps. Uh, players were hoping that the lack of a dedicated single-player campaign would mean that the online-focused release would comp- like basically compensate with the inclusion of a wealth of maps. Um, n- interesting point to add in here is that Treyarch has said that there's going to be a host of post content, uh, post release content that will be free, including maps and stuff like that. So how many there will be, we don't quite know. Nuketown we know is one of them, so that'll get to 12, but we don't know when it's releasing. Uh, it is interesting that they're charging $60 for a game and that there's only this many maps when apparently when you look into it, uh, the blackout mode was actually added late into development. So the fact that they didn't have this many maps to begin with, it's odd to me that this is how it broke down. Uh, when okay, I don't play Call of Duty map. I don't play Call of Duty games like you. Mm-hmm. But Advanced Warfare, and then I remember playing a some of Black Ops Three, and then definitely like Modern Warfare Two and stuff. Most Call of Duty games used to launch with about fifteen, if not a little bit more maps per game. Yeah, somewhere around that range. So the fact that they're coming in lower with a game that's only online based is a little surprising. Now I think the argument could be on this is that some of the maps. Maybe th- maybe they didn't add more maps because they had to start thinking about how they were going to worry about the Battle Royale map. And if that's if there's more than one to begin with. Because, like, one thing I don't know because I haven't played Fortnite yet. When you play Fortnite, is there more than one map to choose from or is it just no, one map? It's just one map. But there's different sections of the map, so it can feel dynamic every time you play yeah, it. Yeah, there's, like, different, like, cities in the map and there's different sure. areas. Now, do we know, is that how it's going to be with Call of Duty? Is there going to be just one blackout map, the one that we were playing on, or are there planning to be more? I, I mean, I doubt there will be more, but they haven't announced anything yet. To so then that makes it even that. more interesting if they would not. Definitely when we were playing the Call of Duty beta and you're looking at it, it's almost like an amalgamation of a bunch of other maps that are just slapped into to a, a bigger map area. So it's like you, you get a workspace and it's like, okay, well, this is going to be the recreation of this um, map. And yeah, of, map. of Nuketown. Yeah. I'm not saying that's actually one in there. I'm just throwing names out. And we slapped it in here and then there'll be some planes and some houses and then you come over here and this is the firing range. Um, and then you come over here and it's like they're pulling the other famous maps from different games. Like there's a, there's a building that you said was part of like a World War II map, uh, Call of Duty World War II. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. or well, no, Call of Duty uh, Ward at War. Oh, it was a World at War. Okay, my bad. They're both okay. Same game. Well, what, <laughs> well, World War Two is literally the title of a new, of a new game. I know. So I, I just, know. I, make I mean, and that's what I thought that you meant on it. But at the same time, they're basically the same game. So it doesn't yeah. Matter. So um, I mean, to me, it's it's kind of one of those things of like, after playing Blackout, I realized that without friends, it's just not fun. Like battle royale games aren't fun uh, to me anymore. Uh, I have to have friends, and unless there is at least three people who are buying it that I know that will be playing it, I will not be getting it. Um, so, to me, it's it's one of those things that like I mean, yeah, more maps is always good. It depends on what the free content is going to be, but I mean, I'm kind of indif- in, indifferent about it. I mean, I could see that, but I do think it's something that's worth talking about. Uh, and the other thing that I thought was interesting about it is I saw where apparently on the blackout mode you won't be able to you won't be able to prestige. I mean, uh, I'm not surprised about that either because I don't even think. Well, like, I think it's just interesting because. It takes away from the idea of well, when you prestige, Call of Duty izing. I mean the game, the game, the play. The style. fundamental of prestiging though is to lose all of your stuff and go back and go back and regain. When it in this game you do that anyway. You, well, yeah, you have no progress really in this game. Yeah, but I think it would just make what you could do with prestige is get rid of that and just start adding where you get certain skins that you could put on your character that are part of prestige, like they've I always mean, yeah, done. And that could, be a way. It could be like I say could, always, but uh, Advanced Warfare definitely did that. There were specific pieces of armor you could only get by prestiging, and I thought that was a cool idea because my goal in prestiging whenever I was playing Advanced Warfare was not to for anything other than like oh I get this cool armor piece that I otherwise wouldn't get and that's why I love the idea of the armor pieces being all individual in Advanced Warfare I'd I'd highly doubt they'll do that again though I do too which sucks because that was my favorite setup and it was was very similar to what I liked about Resistance 2 uh, where you could get different it wasn't as individualized but you could kind of change different stuff and put different pat packs and stuff on you Hmm. Uh, it's you know it's one of those things it's it's unfortunate that they never put it back in but I'm curious to see how well this game does because pre-orders are still high for it. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm telling you, one of the one of the biggest Twitch streamers, Doctor Disrespect, is, is praising it. So like when he praises a game, sure. 
there's gonna be people people What's, people go out and get it just to play the game and with the chance of playing it with him or or at least you know when you're sure. watching a stream or you want to be in the circle of the game he's playing to understand what's going on i think the other thing because i don't know much about dr disrespect i assume that he probably came from fortnite or PUBG, one of them so uh, PUBG. Yeah. so he, he already came from fortnite. another game in the in the style uh so people of course would be keen to move with him to a new game of that style that he's praising so right. it makes sense to move it that way i, I mean just, people say that the only reason fortnite's famous is because of the twitch streamer named ninja and that's a very like that's a very like almost credible claim sure but i mean or at I, least a, it's a it's a high it's it's that much bigger and in, in a notable way that if he wasn't part of it it wouldn't be quite as big as it right was. because I, I i mean when you think about it fortnite's having tournaments and stuff now without this massive twitch streamer who pulled the attention to this game it's kind of hard to see that this game would be at where it is now it may not be there i still think it would probably be doing i think it'd be outperforming PUBG. Uh, because of the free to play nature yeah, of it, yeah, I just don't um, think it's gonna have it. It would have the impact that it has now, like where you see Fortnite sure. backpacks and stuff. Sure, Fortnite's such a weird story, going from it a is. game that was not meant to be that at all to being bigger because of this added in mode. Crazy. Uh, anyway, let's say next up, um, also Black Ops Four. Not surprisingly, Sony and Activision are continuing their partnership with the game, uh, so the marketing will be going towards Sony. And Sony have announced three different Black Ops Four bundles this time around. A little interesting. No special edition console good the last one was hideous it was hideous uh but still interesting because they've done one for every game except for advanced warfare so far right oh no infinite warfare didn't get one no they didn't actually You're right. so it, it's not that weird that's good that's a good point uh anyway so nothing special you'll be getting a digital copy of the game if you buy one of them uh and the only difference between the three is what model of ps4 you'll be getting so you can get a uh, 500 gig slim a one terabyte slim or ps4 pro that includes a digital copy of the game um so not a great deal, but hey, if you're going to be buying a PlayStation and Call of Duty at the first point anyway, might as well buy the bundle. Right. Um, and it's online only game, so I imagine that, oh man, I wonder how the used market's going to go in this game. That's going to be weird too. What do you mean? The used market on it because it will, it will be online only, and that does have an impact on used games. Does it? Oh yeah, dude. Destiny is a perfect example of that. A lot of games like Warhawk, when they're online only and there's no other way, a lot of people just like I know a lot of people who won't buy the game because it's online only. I know a couple of people who are Call of Duty faithfuls who won't buy it because there's no story because that's oh, what that's they play. Unusual to me. I mean, I, I get that. I mean, I'm not going to buy it because there's no story, and I'm not even a Call of Duty faithful, so <laughs> makes sense to an extent. Uh, anyway, uh, see, players interested in Soul Calibur Six will have a chance to play the beta starting Friday, September 28th at 8 p.m. PST uh, to October 1st at 8 a.m. PST. Uh, during this time, 15 characters will be available to play in, uh, across nine different arenas. This is to stress test ahead. It's about a, a, you know, a month ahead of the game's release, um, which makes about sense. So if you've been curious about it, you get a chance to play it. This is interesting. Uh, Sony is sending out free $10 PSN codes to some users in North America. Uh, users must be registered for PSN emails and then are randomly selected so there's no guarantee that you will get one but be on the lookout through your uh, emails for it uh the promotion looks to be expiring october 5th so you have a good number of days for it to get sent to you and use it uh and this is also interesting and it's a similar note but slightly different in the in europe and uh in the uk ps plus members are receiving three month netflix subs to select long time subs also being randomly selected it's weird um yeah odd partnering uh but i guess you know whatever don't be wrong. If they just sent me a thing or like, hey, we're going to pay for three months of your Netflix, I'd be like, cool. You know, like I don't need it. Yeah. But cool. You know, it's, I mean, if you think about the value of what that is, Netflix is what, 10 bucks a month now, 11 bucks a month, 30, even? 30 bucks, 30 bucks. So that's like 33 bucks. Like that. That's pretty good. Uh, Jump Force is adding Yusuke and Togoro from Yu Yu Hakusho to the roster, which is sweet. That fight is so cool. Imagine getting to recreate that fight. If they have the arena, that'd be really cool. Yeah, man, I, I need to rewatch you. Uh, what, what is it called now? Uh, the what the uh, dark tournament? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't watched it in a good. You know, me either. I, I love that show so much. Uh, Atlas have announced that Catherine Full Body's Western release in 2019 will include both English and Japanese audio tracks. So for people who like that, which if PSX uh, 2017 was anything to show about Ghost of Tsushima, a lot of people really like that option. Um, I don't if, get it if personally. We're getting PSX 2018. Huh? I said if we're going to get a PSX 2018. Yeah, I mean, I said 2017, I thought. But either way, uh, well, I hope we head. do. I hope we do. 
next up, Last of Us fans have the yearly Outbreak Day celebration coming up on Wednesday the 26th. That's two days after this episode uh, airs, uh, where participating users can nab avatars, a dynamic theme, wallpapers, and that's the stuff we know about, but there's even more that they have said is yet to be revealed. I'm curious if they'll do another poster or something like that, or if they'll show gameplay. They can do a lot of things on this day. Um, depending on when they when they wanting to release it, I would say don't show stuff, but I mean, I guess it'll be a hype machine either way. It's just what it is. Yeah. Um, big series. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters next DLC fighter has been revealed to be Android 17. His release will coincide with a big update for the game, adding new stages and more. Uh, he can be purchased individually for four ninety nine. So if you uh, want to hop on that Android 17, do it. He looks really cool. Uh, though I feel like he's a character that was obviously, Forfeited, like for or, you know, whatever, pulled from the original release just so they could sell them later down the line. Which I mean, it's a business model, so whatever. This one's interesting, and it's been rumored for a little bit, off and on. I've heard things about it, but one of many long rumored Diablo projects has come to light with the official announcement of Netflix's animated Diablo series. I don't know how to feel about this. I'm cautiously excited because not, I've heard yeah, good I'm things not. about Castlevania. Yeah, but Castlevania has a story to tell, and Diablo does too. Don't get me wrong, but like they're always the same. They're always the, yeah. Even though don't get me wrong, man, the, the Diablo three story when you're actually you know it, it's so spread out because of the gameplay style, but when it's going, and it's firing, it's really cool. It is really cool, especially all the cutscenes they have in it with the, like the full CGI cutscenes. Yeah, those are beautiful. So if you think, man, what if the whole series looks like that? I mean, I'd watch that for Ooh. sure. But like, I'd I watch I, it just. To, I still watch Castlevania, and I love Castlevania much more of a series than I do Diablo. So that shows you my interest in this. <laughs> I feel you. I haven't watched Castlevania either, even though I've heard good things. I keep wanting to try it just because you get that fear of missing out almost. Like, well, what if it's amazing and for some reason it just goes away? Ah, it won't. I'll watch it later. <laughs> Uh, Vampire, the Victorian London vampire RPG released earlier this year that I ranted and raved about. Um, it's scheduled to receive its difficulty mode update this week, so that's one of many updates that they're doing for post-release content. Um, so if you ever, you know, if you had problems with it or you want to hop back in it and play it harder or easier for some reason, you can do that. Uh, Battlefield Five, and this is actually super interesting to me. Uh, will apparently include the option to locally disable the chat filter on the game. So what I think is interesting about this is that I don't know if another game has done this that I can remember. I definitely don't remember that, but basically it means that. If someone's sending harsh language to you or whatever, that if you decide yourself to pull the chat filter off, what happens when it comes time for like, what if you try and report them? Because I guess my argument there and what I think is interesting about it is, I mean, I'm sure that they'll probably just still look into it and then just ban appropriately, but I don't feel like they should because they offered a buffer. No, no. It's, and it's you not purposely even turned it off. So, like, it's about the toxic behavior. Well, sure, but you know that you can help keep the toxic behavior at bay by having this thing that's automatically turned on when you play the game. You have to go out of your way to turn it off locally, and I mean, yeah, you're welcoming it's also the potential ma- behavior. It's mainly there for kids and stuff. It's mainly there for or people who don't want to see that. So then, like, if, sure. you, if you're an adult that doesn't care and you turn it off, like... That doesn't matter. Like, what you see is not your fault because that person was going to say that regardless of the filter or not. Yeah, but if you never turned the filter off, you wouldn't have seen it in that context or you in that sense still, or whatever. The person would have still said it, though. And which sure, is, which and is I get a, that. a toxic behavior. I get that, but it's also it's just that the game has a built-in countermeasure for that. And it's, it's not a countermeasure, though. What, 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 the, what the purpose of these filters are for is, to, is so you don't see it. It's not to prevent somebody from doing it. I mean... So, I, I get what you're saying. You're not going to prevent somebody from doing this. These people okay, are going to yeah. do this anyway. Right. Now, of course, you could ban them, but if you're not going to see it in, in its true form anyway, if you don't go out of way to turn it off, I just think it's interesting. It's more of a of a moral standpoint of I don't necessarily feel like you should, if you're inviting that behavior into your life, if you don't want to see it, just go turn, it, off go, chat go turn it back it. off. You know what I mean? Well, I mean... Technically, you are if you know I mean, that the if you know that the point of the filter there is to stop the potential of that behavior of that language and behavior getting through to you at least unfiltered. I mean, no, because like to, in my opinion, like you'll see people who will say stuff like, say you get a PSN message and it's somebody saying something to you, and you're like, okay, whatever. But then you get another one that is like it's a different guy completely, but he says something else, and you're like, I'm gonna report that because it's that one's too far. It's the same thing, except now you could see what they say. Sure, now, but the, again, these are, these are slightly different things. I don't think it's quite fair to comp- compare a PlayStation message, which is direct to you, and will not have the same filter necessarily. I mean, the, the that's the, going the chat direct to be direct to you to you as well. I mean, there's there's the 
the chat filters in these games could be to everybody directly. It could be to your squads. It could be anything. Well, I know that, but I'm, uh, I guess, and maybe I don't play enough online games to have a a, a, a real big understanding of this. I don't even think this is this. something we're going to get in consoles to begin with. I think this is a PC only thing. I don't. I don't think there's a chat dialogue in any console game I've played. I don't know where you can type it unless. It's I don't. Like, I don't know. That's a good point. Good Final question. Final Fantasy 14. Does Battlefield even come to PC? Is Battlefield one on PC? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I have no clue. That, that's one of the PCs like biggest benchmarks. Like, yeah, well, not only benchmarks, but just like big, big like shooters. Like all the Battlefield games, are always are pretty big on PC. That's uh, where I, guess I thought st- Call of Duty would be because I know Call of Duty's on the PC. Call of Duty's the exact opposite. <laughs> it's, it's one of the worst. It's everybody on console. I don't know. I think it's just an interesting question of of that. But I guess I mean yeah, to the point. If it's PC only, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can hook up a, P- a keyboard to PS4. I wouldn't be surprised right, if they the kept it in the game. In, the chat thing isn't in there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't I, play Battlefield. I, yeah, you play Battlefield played, One. You would know more than me. I don't. Remember, I don't remember Battlefield One at all that much. I remember the maps, <laughs> but I don't remember I had a chat feature in it. <laughs> anyway, I just think it's an interesting conundrum on the, on that. Anyway, but I mean, I get your point, so I think that that's fair. Uh, let's see. Big news for most people, and this is something people have been wanting for a while, though not quite exactly how they wanted it. But Sony have announced the ability to download most PS4 and PS2 titles through PlayStation Now onto PC or PS4 systems. Uh, so this allows PS4 games with pro enhancements to utilize those enhancements since they are no longer streaming. It's actually on housed on the console, which is cool. Uh, one thing that I was unaware of about pro, about now, but it's going to make more sense in this situation again, uh, is that any game that you play online on PS Now does not require PlayStation Plus. Good. Doesn't matter what the game is. That's really cool. Uh, so basically, it, the way that they're saying that is if you use PS Now, and it helps justify the cost, right? If you use PS Now, and you don't use PS Plus because every game you're going to play is going to be on PS Now, and in this current setup, the price currently is down to nine ninety nine. Um, uh, uh, for a month for new users or ninety nine ninety nine for a year for all users, regardless of it. And that's just, it's temporary pricing. It expires on the 25th, which is the day after this goes live. Is so, it a $20 a month normally? Yes. Yeah, now here's ridiculous. the thing. It is, but not if you're also working in the price of, pay, of places and plus into that. I mean, yeah, it's still ridiculous. It's still ridiculous. I think $15 would be more of like, okay, well they're both together. Uh, but I wish, and it's a little disappointing that the nine ninety nine is a temporary pricing uh, thing. I think it's more because of the fact that the the service is still aiming to, a, in the long run, be a streaming service, which is inherently different. Isn't Games Pass ten dollars a month? Yeah, but you don't stream at all on Games Pass, right? You so it's just a so difference. It's still a better service. <laughs> no, but, it's a, it's a better service, but streaming is just there's different costs involved see, with streaming. That's, that's the issue I have with this this whole announcement is that like. For one, the PS4 titles are very limited to good quality sure. games. Second of all, the well, PS2 not, titles are... The Last of Us and stuff like that are on there, and Killzone Shadow. Right, but there's like only that. a handful of them. Sure, uh, But sure. then the PS2 titles are the same, except most of the PS2 titles can be bought outright anyways. Sure. For like $7. So like nine times out of ten, depending on what games you're going to play for, this kind of service would be the ones that you would use, like we used Games Pass for, which you have for a couple months, you play everything on it you want, and then you just get rid of it. Sure. It and is, that still gives the, I guess I was, I was really disappointed in this. Sure, but it's a step in the right direction. It is a step in the right direction. Is what I really mean. Because but you get yeah, What like other this. direction are we going to go into, though? Because you can't do cell architecture. So, like, this is kind of it. Well, the reason I say that is that, you know, this is what we say, but PlayStation could have also, it's, it's weird, right? Because PlayStation didn't have to do this with PlayStation Now. They could have introduced their own form of, of Games Pass and just call it anything else. It wouldn't be PlayStation Game Pass, but it'd basically be that, right? right. It, it could have been a completely different service where they, they work in the same way as my, a Microsoft would. They don't need to. Or that's just, why they're not yeah, going you get, to. You get to um, download select games from this catalog for free. But of course, the difference in this is that this is more, it, it's interesting because, you know, we were talking last week uh, about the future of streaming, me and you were. I can't remember if we did on the episode or not, but how streaming games and the Xbox is talking about streaming. Sony is technically... Cloud yeah, cloud gaming is basically what we're going to call it, but it's still streaming. It's right, streaming. yeah, that's what, that's so, what we're talking about, though. When you think about it that way, it's that Sony was so far ahead of everybody in terms of adopting the idea that they did it at a time where it wasn't profitable, no. uh, and it was a it was a bad move ultimately. The only upside to buying Gaikai that came was the ability, and it still wasn't that big of a big deal, but it is what gave us the streaming chip that allows remote play, right? Uh, and also allows things like uh, game share and stuff like that. Yeah. So when you look at it like that, it's like okay, well, there's some benefits there, and these are things that won them over from consumer aspects early on, but. You start to think about this from the future of the series itself, or the future of, sorry, of the company itself. If this is the beginning of, okay, here's PS4 titles you can download, PS2 titles that you can download, maybe they're going to start going up on the PS4 titles. This is the best case scenario. This is what you hope for. Uh, more PS4 titles are added to the service, definitely first-party ones. Not not day one, but 
three months in, maybe. Yeah, you know. I, well, I mean, right. I also mean like right now in this current state, sure. it's in. Sure, like uh, that's for what the you hope for. Price for the games you get. Yes, so that's what you hope for with the pricing structure, and hopefully they find a way to come down with it eventually. But the other thing is that with PS5, PS5 would presumably actually be able to handle mimicking the cell architecture potentially. Hopefully, yeah. So if they can do that. And th- and that's what they're doing, and they're adding PS fives that are working on the back end to stream out a servers, uh, stream it out to your system, which is exactly what happens. That's why I say the comparing of them is weird because yes, it's still expensive, but Games Pass has no cost involved. All it is is a it's rerouting you through a second. Like there's just they're adding another party into you getting the game, which is Microsoft instead of going directly that to whatever publisher. Right. Um, but other than that, nothing changes. You're downloading the game from the same service as everywhere else. In this service, when you are actually streaming, and that, since that's still what the system is or what the service is trying to remain the majority of, for PS3 so games. that they're ahead of the game whenever PS5 comes and like, well, now streaming is great. It's better than it has ever been. Internet speeds are improving, and we're ahead of the competition with already having a. a that's what you think that they're aiming for, right? Um, the co- the problem with that now is that people who want to use the service have to pay for that cost because streaming isn't free. There's a back end. There's system. There's basically PlayStation Three guts sitting on a server rack that do all the processing for you and then send out to your internet. That there's a cost involved there that's not involved in and Game the, Pass. And the crazy thing is, and we've said it before too, is that like streaming is not the current way of the future. I mean, it might end up being the future, like. Once, but it, there's a like, lot of the steps. FCC calms down with everything with data caps and stuff. But like right now in America, there's like unless you just have like the best ISP ever, it is not viable for me or Brett to have PlayStation now um, with the perk of streaming because yeah, you just couldn't I, do it. It's viable to us in terms of that we could do it and it'd be a playable situation, but we'd eat through a data cap. Oh, it, it was so fast, and then like it, it would also yeah. be a, a plus from us for downloading the games. But at the same time, it's it's one of those things for us specifically uh, that. If the game's on PS Now as a PS4 game and we want to play it, chances are we've had an opportunity to already either play it or buy it. Sure. And that's uh, the difference of us. This is not a service aimed at us, to be yeah, fair. No, this uh, is a service aimed for. Honestly, I don't know who it's aimed for. Like I me guess either. A new a new PlayStation owner that that gets a free trial and wants or, to play the games, maybe. Or I guess. people who don't want to buy games and instead of buying a new game they every month, they go, I, you know, I don't play, I don't game a whole lot. If I just pay $20 a month, that's less than buying a, a new game a month anyway and I still get to play some games. I don't know. Yeah, but if you don't game a lot, 20 bucks a month is a lot. That's true. That's For so a hobby weird. that you're not as involved in. Um, but that's why the other upside is is that you're also at least not having to pay for your PlayStation Plus when you do play it if you're that kind of player. Yeah, it's a but, mixture. But you would lose out on three... I'm not gonna say three games a month. better, but yeah, th- three sure. games a month. That's a good point. It's a, it's a weird situation. It's a weird mixed bag. It's a step in the right direction, and you just hope that PS3 is eventually looped in and involved on PlayStation Five, and this becomes a better setup. I almost think it might have been smarter to just make a if they were gonna try and go this route, just make a separate service and not try and mimic Games Pass with the day and date thing. Yeah, um, but I don't know. It's weird to see. Maybe this is a trial for that idea. See how people react to this to see if it's worth going that extra step. But I, I don't know. It's a weird setup in between. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 received a limited edition Slim PS4 console announcement currently only for Japan. Uh, the Slim will feature a different design on the Pro uh, th- to the Pro that they announced at E3. Uh, so whether the Pro or the Slim will get released in the West is still yet to be seen. Uh, GameStop is currently saying that they're just waiting for it to be added in their system. I don't know if that means that they have actually gotten word that it's going to happen or if they're just saying that they don't know anything until it hits their computers, and it's it's frustrating, you know. I yeah. don't. It's one of those weird things, but oh well. Uh, PUBG looks to finally be coming to PS4. Interestingly enough, uh, with Korean rating board uh, listing a PS4 release uh, coming this late is interesting to me because I feel like two things can happen here. I feel like it's going to flop against the competition that already exists. Definitely, when you have Battlefield Five and Call of Duty coming out with similar game modes, yeah, Fortnite will. already being incredibly strong on its own, uh, and then it just coming so late. So that's the one thing, right? The and it costing money where Fortnite's free, uh, and then it costs money. But the other two that cost money are arguably better. Are of course, better. yeah, you um, got you have more multiplayer modes than the other ones, and you have better quality um, in general. Better quality, yeah, yeah, you, less buggy. Not, yeah, it's just at this point, it's too late. So. But I think the other thing that's interesting, and it's just something that's a good argument point because you've seen it happen this way, is that a lot of games that choose to go Xbox first and then come PlayStation afterwards, it's kind of a bad stance almost on PlayStation users. But I think some of it might be that we just have other stuff and we kind of go, well, you know what? It's also dumb that it happened. But whenever Tomb Raider went, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider went to be Xbox exclusive, whenever it finally did come to PlayStation, that whole year wait between it, people were like, when the game comes, I'm not buying it on PlayStation because this was a stupid move on, micro- on Sony's part. I mean, Square Enix's part. Um, 
So they were like, you know, I'm not going to support this decision. This is not going to be what I do. And you saw the game did not do very well on PlayStation 4. And I'm wondering if the same thing could happen here. That's such a stupid stance, though. It is. So but, it's a, but we've seen it happen. PlayStation exclusivity. Sure. But they all make sense, to be fair. Tomb Raider was a weird one, and I get why people were up in arms about yeah, it, and even one, I was. That one makes the most sense, being a PS1 original in the first place. Like, Yeah, it was, it was very weird. Now, the Japanese games that inadvertently end up as a PlayStation exclusive and then come to Xbox like Nier. No one's going to be mad about that. There's not, they didn't know Nier was going to do well and there's not a huge market for Japanese games on the Xbox. So they first have to let the game prove itself and then release it on Xbox where right. it's like, now we can expand our customer base because we know that the West is interested in this type of game. Um, that's not the case with this. This is a series that does really well in the West and has always been home on PlayStation to some extent. It just feels weird to whip, to rip it away at this point. So I don't know. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but we've seen it happen and it'll be yeah. interesting to see which one happens. I don't think PUBG is going to do well on PlayStation. I think it'll probably die out. And that's where one of the things of crossplay is actually going to be. If it does die out, you're going to lose the fact that they, the PlayStation players for once who actually want to play the game might wish that they had access to PC crossplay and Xbox crossplay. So they did. They just had a full lobby. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's where crossplay is, you know, Sure. Pretty decent. So that's an interesting one. Uh, similar story with uh, Castlevania. Interestingly enough, with Saul talking about it, uh, but the classics Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood making their way to PS4 with the Korean rating board also listing it for PS4 release. Uh, it's called Castlevania Requiem, which I think is interesting. So I don't know Super. if it's going to be like a remaster or just a straight port. Super excited for either either one. Yeah, me too. Um, Let's see. THQ Nordic continued their shopping spree of series with the recent purchasing of Alone in the Dark series and Act of War series, both from Atari. I just don't know what I what is their checkbook, man? Or and I know that these are a lot of smaller franchises. I'm sure they weren't expensive, but what in the world? Unless this is a similar situation. Atari was the original owner and publisher, so this is a situation where they get completely the yeah. series. But I don't know what they're going to do in this situation because Alone in the Dark's last game, Illumination, was awful, and nobody liked it. So remastering it would not be profitable. So I don't know what their what their end goal is with that. I don't know enough about Active War, but it's interesting to see. A um, couple more things. Spyro Reignited Trilogy is following the Crash remakes with individual trophy lists per game. We now have the trophy list. There's 108 trophies between all three games, and uh, by extension of them all being different, there's individual platinum per game, uh, which is good for trophy hunters out there, people who want to do that. Uh, I don't know if I'll go towards platinum in them. I love the Spyro games, but not the same way as I love Crash. So it'll be interesting to see how, how much they sink their teeth into me. Uh, and then the last thing we will save until after reader mail, because we're going to use it to segue ourselves into our topic of the show, which we teased, which is involving Red Dead 2. So Saul, go ahead and move into reader mail. Sure thing. So we have something a little special plan for this reader mail. We will do after all three of our questions are answered. But for those that do not know, reader mail is our segment during the podcast in which we answer three questions, two from Twitter and one from Facebook. And every Wednesday and Friday, you will see a tweet go up on our Twitter over there at triangle S Q R D. And uh, we invite you all to ask us questions. And if we don't answer your question on the show, do not fret. Do not worry. Do not take it personal. We'll be answering it no matter what on the Reader Mail episode that airs the first Friday of every month. We got For you. the previous month. We got you. Uh, first up question on the list, uh, one of our Patreons. Thank you uh, for being a Patreon. We have uh, Steven Salazar. He says, if you're stuck to play only one franchise series of games for the rest of your life, what game series would that be? Ooh. Every game from that series is included. I have an easy answer for this one. I'm curious. Final Fantasy. I had a feeling. It's so much variety. Yeah, because you have different types of turn-based. You have different games in general. You get yep. to go between being full 3D and being And I would think that I would be allowed based. internet access for 14. <laughs> so yeah, and eleven if you were if you were able to still play it, right. you know, but basically you'd have two different online types to bounce between as well. Yeah, that's so a like, really good answer. So like you have turn based games that can keep you busy. You got action RPGs that will keep you busy. You got MMOs that'll keep you busy. You got all this stuff. Like I'll be good. What you got? I got you. I think that's a really good answer, and I think your reasoning leads me to want to swing towards your towards your answer because of that. But if I had to pull off. This gets a little weird because variety is not as much there, but it's still there in a sense. I'm trying to think of what game I could play just literally over and over again and not get tired of, and it'd be a full series. And it's hard because, like, you know, part of me goes, okay, well, what are games I just love? Kingdom Hearts, right? Kingdom Hearts does help by, like, Chain of Memories having a different combat system. Uh, Birth by Sleep technically having a different combat system. They feel a little bit different. I think, it's a, I think that would probably be my easy-to-go-to answer. Final Fantasy is just a really good answer. 
I'm trying to think if there's any other series that has been able to morph across so many different genres, but still, not even, I mean, yeah, genres and play styles to an extent. Uh, I think God of War might be an interesting answer uh, because of the new one and the old one's even different, but the other seven that already existed are so similar that I feel like I would get burned out if I just had to play those over and over again. Yeah. Ooh, this is a hard question. Because then you think about other games like where they have post-game content. God of War has never had that until the newest one. No. So Kingdom Hearts seems like a good answer still because there's a lot to do afterwards. So even outside of the of the game, you have more you can do outside of that. And a lot of them have mini games that you can do, which help change up the pace of play. And so you, know, you could just be like, well, I'm just going to do this stupid balloon flight thing and <laughs> just so I don't have to whack any more people with my keyblade. <laughs> I don't know. Final Fantasy is the good answer, and it's probably the best answer I can really think of. Uh, but Kingdom Hearts is going to be the answer I would have given if you didn't go first. Oh, okay. okay. So we'll, we'll roll that way. All righty. That's a good one. Our uh, second and last question for Twitter is our good friend, No Fate, Sean Neo. He says, are you going to see Venom? Brett, are you going to see Venom? I'm going to try to with my current personal situation going down. I don't know that I'll be able to, um, but... We will see about that. I may be able to work it out. Um, but before I go into why not, Saul, are you planning to see it? I will probably not go to the movies to see it, but I will seek it out to rent on a YouTube or Amazon once it is out to rent. That might be what I do too because of the personal reason of me not seeing it is more because getting out of the house is going to become harder for me soon. Um, but I I think that we probably share similar like worries cautiously optimistic about it yeah like the fact that the character that they're using is not a character that's known for being a very pg idea that i and where you'd want to go yeah where you'd want to go with with the character of venom is when you're going live action for sure you know when you're not going cartoon and everything's just it's not as bad by nature of it being cartoony but when you go live action and that, and that goes away it's like well if this is gonna be a realistic take on what we've seen venom do it'd be very bloody and it'd be very crazy. And you worry that, okay, so this is a very otherwise mature character that what are they doing to get him down to PG and how much is that going to affect the movie and what you feel about with the character? And is it going to be because they have such small moments of the real Venom being out? or is it? And it's just going to instead be the Venom symbiote helping and that's how they kind of try and toe the line? I think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be the symbiote trying to help. And instead of being fully taking over so often, like yeah. you see it a couple times, they do like they did with Prince of Persia, where you're basing it off an existing franchise. And instead of making the whole movie constantly rewinding, it's like, well, we know rewinding is a big part of the series. So what we're going to do is show it one or two really cool times, but outside of that, you don't get it, which is again disappointing. You want to see Venom not just as Eddie Brock; you want to see him all the way through too. Yeah, and it's gonna. I think No Fate mentioned it. Do you think it's gonna be like the monster in Godzilla, where he's barely shown, but he's supposed to be the, the title I, character? That's, that's the reason that I'm worried about it. Is I also I think it's gonna mirror Spider Man Three's uh, Venom too. They're gonna show more of Tom Hardy than they're gonna show a Venom. And yeah, gonna, like they showed more of Tover Grace than they showed a Venom. Sure, I don't think that should be the case. I think that you should get acquainted with Tom Hardy. And then there should never be like, and they've already showed it in the trailer of like, and I know this isn't the comics, but like they show like the face being peeled back and it's Tom Hardy's face. Like, stop that. If he's Venom in the moment, let him be Venom. If, and he, like they can't, they do that for an excuse to show more Tom Hardy. Well, and also because it's visually stunning to be fair. Like if they do it right, you know, yeah, I was gonna say, depends but on the it does, it's not what I want from what the character is. You know, it's like, well, he's overtaken. He's Venom in this moment. Let him be overtaken and just be, yeah. you know, but, I mean, I don't know. I guess it exudes that he has a little more control over this. Or, I don't know. It's weird. That's why I don't know how I feel about it. My biggest concern, or my biggest reason for the concern, I don't understand it. I don't understand. They've We've got proof after proof now with two Deadpool movies and Logan both selling incredibly well and reviewing incredibly well. I don't understand the fear of going rated R. No, oh, yeah. I, we I, know that it's not going to hurt the money. It's 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 a dumb trend that or not trend but mindset that I think does not does not need to be a thing anymore. Like the new Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. I bet you that's gonna be rated R. Guaranteed. Oh yeah, I would I would it imagine needs to be. And I hope it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's so. just like I think that there's just too much of a fine line there. And I think that like when you're PG thirteen or whatever, I think that yeah, you may be missing out on like your some of your aud- key audience, depending on the demographic of what you're doing, like the the, the style of movie. But um Man, does it just like it could really hold a film back? And I don't mean to say that because it, you know, I was once 13, obviously, you know, 
Sure. Couldn't get into R rated movies, but I still tried anyways. Got into a couple of them. Yeah, my, I mean, my mom didn't really care, you know. And uh, I was about snuck into an R rated movie. So I think that's part of it, too. Yeah, sneaking into them. But I mean, most of the time, my mom would just let me. So it didn't matter. Yeah. I didn't really have to. It was just whenever I was like short notice trying to go and my mom couldn't come with me. I still never had problems, thankfully. Yeah, no, um, I never did either. But so, it's, a, it's a weird thing to even have a problem with. I, that's I just don't understand the idea behind it. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. Uh, Why don't you lead us on to our last room? A question that comes from our good Facebook group over there. Facebook, Mr. Josh Drigo asks, spec-wise, what would we want in a PS5? We've loosely talked about it. Yeah. But, and I know that there's one thing that me and Saul are definitely... Uh, in, I'm not going to say complete opposition, but we definitely stand in different sides of it. I... Spec wise, we know kind of what we want to go. I want to go towards at least twelve, if not sixteen gigabytes of RAM, if not more. Sixteen gigabytes is minimum. For but me. sixteen is considering that the X is already out and it's got it's got twelve. I would hope that whatever next gen PlayStation console 4K, is needs if, to be at least sixteen. Yeah, at least eighteen. Um, I mean sixteen. Yeah, I don't know why I said. Yeah, 18. I mean we talked about graphically wise what we'd like to see. Something I don't have a teraflop a, thing, but you know something on par with a ten eighty. 1080 Ti, either one of those is fine. Yeah, we'll get somewhere close to that. It's going to be AMD related, so you really shouldn't compare it to an AMD. I guess it'd be trying to compare it to Nvidia. the Nvidia. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, don't compare it with the Nvidia. Instead, try no, and compare it with an AMD. I'm, co- I'm comparing what just um, straight power outage. Yeah, what, output. what like if you say what a 1080 does, like or people who know what a 1080 card can do is what I'm expecting. Though I'm a little, I don't know if we're going to get quite that. I mean, yeah, and I think that the the, the reason for and this I don't topic, necessarily know that it's necessary. That's that's why I don't because like you know my well, card my card can do 4K. What matters is the processor. Can the processor keep up with that? Right. So if you give it a gr- a great processor foundation and then you give it the power of a 390x, yeah, and you know, I mean, I mean, well, and the other big thing too is that it varies so differently now in the future with people having 1080p TV and 4K TVs. Like which one you need to appease to. Also, what I do want to say is I do hope that there is a way to, and I can't remember if we talked about this before, is to do native 1440p. Yeah, we've talked about it in the past. I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know that enough people have a 1440 TV. or because no, It's, it, it's going to be a monitor yeah, at that point. I don't know enough people that are necessarily trying for that, for it to be a big issue that they need to focus about. The thing that they really need to cover, and I think that they're going to, we've already seen it, is for people that have a 1080p TV, mandatory downscale has to be there. Um, yeah. Which, we, again, we already see, so that's fine. Uh, and then the other thing has to be that, of course, it works on a 4K TV, at hopefully native 4K. Right. So, um, uh, but, oh, go ahead. Oh, the thing that we were differing on, I know, though, was, oh, was how VR. where we stand on VR and whether we want the chip to be on there or in or not. No. And you stand, you stand, you seem to stand pretty firmly on wanting it in whatever outside box can happen as an additive. Whereas Correct. I want it to eliminate the outside box and do all that processing inside, partially because the box just makes the solution of VR that much more. Un- I, non-elegant well there's two ways two two ways or two reasons why i don't want uh one of your chip inside and uh one is is that if it becomes absolute mid-gen you can't really refresh it that way that's you, true it requires that's a box true. anyways that's true two is that if vr becomes a flop five years in the future nobody uses it anymore now you have some proprietary hardware in your system that is no longer being used and was originally taken up by a team of people to put in there something else could be put in there that would have benefited the system or, or cut the cost. Or one of, one the, cost. of the two. Yeah. Now I don't necessarily know how much the cost would be because I don't, the box doesn't do a lot. It powers the system obviously uh, through USB though, which comes back I, from the PlayStation anyway. I would guess it's probably a hundred dollars worth uh, of the cost of the headset. Headset's 300, 200 bucks for the headset. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it's that high because a lot of it's 3D audio processing, which you could move into because there's benefits of 3D audio processing anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, that's a good question, and I really do wonder how they'll go, how they'll pull it off. Because if you want to talk about something that is already not really being used, of course, some people will use it if it dies off. But it's, it's basically equating to what the Vita chip, the Vita streaming chip, is in the PS4, uh, because it, you know the remote, the chip that makes remote play possible isn't really being used by that many people, but it's there. But right. how much did it really cost to put in? Yeah, and that's. But I'm worried VR is more expensive. Like it may be, it may be, it may be it is. I don't honestly know to get into as well. Um, but oh, to, to yeah. end this reader mill, we do have some cool stuff going on, something we've never done before and something we would never do before. But we have our good friend Dan over there in the UK. He has sent us some UK chocolates, and it is stuff that we do not see here in the States at all. And it is Cadbury Whispers. This feels really hard. I think it's because it melted and reformed, but I also don't know because I don't know what this chocolate's supposed to be. But let's find out. Yeah, so we're going to kind of taste it on the air and then tell you guys. So I'm if gonna... you're listening to this, it's going to probably be a little bit different for you than people who are watching. But you know what? 
I'll let Brad. It's not every day that we get sent something. I'll let Brad uh, chew his up first, and then so I can talk kind of, and uh, then that way it's just not two of us chewing food on. Man, this looks so. dude. This is really good so far. Is it really These little crumbs? See, yeah. So like, for those that don't know, we have like our main like chocolate pr- uh, like accruer, our provider, main chocolate provider here in the states is Hershey. And Hershey uses a lot of powder and stuff to make their chocolates. They don't use real chocolate in a lot of their stuff. Um, whereas Cadbury does. And we do sell Cadbury here in the States. Nothing like these, though. Nothing and, that I've seen. And it's normally at a slight upcharge, too. And it is it is normally a little bit more expensive. Uh, there is a Cadbury um, uh, bar that you could buy. It's a Carmelo bar. And it's literally in the same color wrapping this is, where it is like... It's weird that this felt so hard, gold. but it's like airy. Look at that. It's like well, fluffy. It says aerated. This is amazing. This is aerated chocolate. So, um, but yeah, so this is always something that I've been interested in doing is like trying stuff from other states. As a matter of fact, there was this really cool um, food box that me and Annie used to do called, um, I forgot what it was called, but it's the treats. You're opening the gold. Try treats, I know. But that's cool. I I, I didn't know, like, yeah, we might as well. But we did a thing called try treats where we would get stuff from um, other countries and each month would be a different country. And uh, it was just kind of cool to taste. So how was that one so far? Man, this, this one really looks good. like this is just milk chocolate. Okay, so this has nothing in it like mine does. Mine has caramel. If you uh, join us for PlayStation, I'm sorry, this is not PlayStation related at all. Um, but man, our, thanks, our, Dan. Well, this our, is really delicious. Our reader mail section never has to be. It's almost. It almost reminds me of Three Musketeers without even having the Three Musketeers whip stuff in this. I, I don't know what. I think it maybe even just texture that's reminding me of it, but it's really good. I didn't see where it said aerated, but I guess up here on the top. So the caramel bar tastes very similar to Carmelo. So if you want something that tastes similar to this that we like, that we have, we have, we sell this like everywhere in the states. And I was kind of expecting that, but it's good. The, the, the Carmelo we have is not aerated though; it's hollow, like crispy chocolate. Oh, wow. it's like a, it's like one of those chocolate bars that has a crisp to it when you bite into it. Man, this is really good. And then Dan also sent some cool. Uh, you're uh, sort of the look weird if you've never seen one and you're from the states. Um, but they're based off of the European design of PS1 cases. Uh, he's he's my design buddy from overseas. He does a lot of cool uh, custom cases himself. Go check him out. My name is Dan on Twitter. He's got this new page thing he was doing. He was in Square XO, and now it's called Travels and Gaming, uh, which looks pretty cool. Are you saying Square's XO changed to that? No, no, no. Okay. He left and went to that. Um, so that's he, why, that's why I, I knew that. I just didn't know if when he left, that's what they went to. Oh, okay, I got you. No, that's all him, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I will put those up in a second. I don't have car- chocolate all over my hands. Yeah, this is really good. This is very similar. It's the texture of the chocolate is a little bit different, though. Oh, man, this is good. And oh, I'm wow. not even really a big caramel person. No, see, I am. Caramel is my jam. Car- caramel makes any kind of... Um, of uh, You opened these so bad. <laughs> you just tore into them. I did a terrible job of opening them. But yeah, caramel. Uh, so like, I don't know, Dan. Like, are they supposed to be this flat? Like, if you're watching, because like, I understand like they're gonna be this wide, but like this flat. Or well, if, you know they melted. They melt, yeah, and I, I, I came together. Obviously. I can't tell if they. I can't tell though. Like, this looks like chocolate laffy taffy. Kinda. It's oh, interesting wow. that it's that good. Get down on us all. I'm gonna quickly splash all you people who watch on YouTube. You see that? It's beautiful. Spyro. Now no this Man's is good because it's so fluffy. Near, of course, Automata, great game. Uh, Lost Fear or Last Fear, whatever it was called. Looks like Secret of Mana, Persona Five. Hit them up. Look at them. They're really pretty. They look good. Thank you, man. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna put these in. I'm probably just gonna frame them. That'll be a cool way to go with it, uh, since our cases are so different sized over here in the states. Uh, but thank you, sir. Look, that's how we pulled this section back over to PlayStation based. Mm. There we go. It was PlayStation based indeed. I'm gonna drink some water. Shout out to my boy Hukuto. Yeah, I've been starving lately, so this is like heaven right now. We should go eat after this, Saul. I need to eat anyway, if you can. I gotta get Annie dinner. Oh, okay, we'll go eat somewhere and then give Annie dinner. <laughs> no, no, like I gotta. Get, go I know. With her I'm to joking. Get dinner. All right. She got work at four. We shall move along onto this, and I guess I'll go ahead and get us going into it. Um, it was kind of my idea, but I think Saul really saw it and, and latched on because it's an interesting idea. And I mentioned it loosely in the Discord the other day. But basically, Red Dead Redemption 2 just got a, a blast of information. And a lot of it's really cool. But it's also unheard of from Rockstar. Or at least 
I'm not going to say completely unheard of it. We saw a little bit of this experimentation back when San Andreas came out, but this is taking all of it to a next level. And what this basically comes down to, we know that they're a company that cares about details. Well, what they've been able to do and where they're moving into detail is stuff that to some people won't matter at all. Like one of the funniest things on here is that horse testicles, if you haven't read this already, are going to be dynamic. And when it's cold, they're going to shrivel up. And when it's warm, they're going to go out. Now, of course, is that a, is that a, a detail that really matters? No. But it helps sell the idea that much more. You're rolling with your crew. They're all on horses. You look at their horse pass you up. It's cold. Their ball sack shriveled up. It's interesting, you know? And uh, it's funny because the beginning of this, what we thought was funny, is that this goes back into a conversation that we've had a couple of times. So we're, uh, I think it was Dan, uh, not the one who sent us chocolate. I can't remember his last name, Al- Alazar or something like that. Uh, but he was asking, like, where do games go since we're hitting like a graphical point of almost no return, right? Oh, is that what it's supposed to look like? I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, Man, that is not what it came to us like, but that's okay. It was still good. It was very good. I'm um, actually looking to see if I can buy some on Amazon. So, you know, when you're looking at it, though, it's like, yeah, we're hitting a graphical boundary, of course. And we're going to still be able to push that. And a lot of it's going to come from different effects and being able to use higher resolution textures across different things as we have that much more power to spend it across. Uh, but the other side of things is you stop worrying about graphics and you look at what the increase in processing power allows you to do in terms of detail and simulation and now of course that's what we see they're doing with this uh with red dead now my question before we even go into what the items are is with all these changes and importance to detail and the detail moving away from just small detail like oh look the cars do this or the characters do this or like because a lot of people loved in grand theft auto 5 the fact that when you weren't playing as a character they were off doing their own thing Pretty much, yeah. I th- I'm pretty sure you can run into other characters. Yeah, like, and people thought that was cool. And like, whenever it switched to a character, it just came into them, and they'd be like getting into a car or driving already or something like that. Yeah. I didn't play Grand Theft Auto Five. This is all based if, off. If you of go like shoot up somebody, conjecture like, to me. If you're playing as like Franklin and you go shoot up uh, Michael's house, he'll text you saying, "Stop shooting my house." <laughs> so See, kinda cool. now that's a whole different level. That's a different thing of detail. That's stuff that's more. It's novel because it's just interesting that they have the game set up to recognize that. Yeah. But now what they're doing with details, they're moving into almost a more simulation-based style. And now what I think is curious is that fans of, of or you know, potential fans of this game, obviously fans of the series, so the Red Dead series as a whole, uh, who are coming to this game, who maybe, didn't care, who maybe don't care for Grand Theft Auto V, but they liked Red Dead 1. Yeah, this is obviously going to be a change from that. Red Dead, 1, Red Dead 1 was not semi like this. So now that you're... Excuse me, that chocolate is kidding me. But now that you're moving into the semi base setup, and it's very, you know, there's a, there's a lot of detail that's based off of things that you've never necessarily seen in a game before. Some of them have been done, but it, it, they are more rare than anything. Is that going to take away from the experience for people who didn't want all this? What about people who just wanted a prettier version of Red Dead 1? And of course, those people exist. Then you have people like me and this was you know so that was my worry and then Saul's saying and, and it was right because I, I thought about this these details and this information actually stands to make me want to play the game more because it's adding things that would interest me more than the original game itself did that's not a hit against the original game it just didn't resonate with me and it didn't make me want to beat it but these small details may be things that make me keep up whenever for some reason the story's not hitting me right or other aspects of the gameplay aren't right well maybe these little things are going to hit me just the way where i don't care and i can push through uh so we're going to go through a couple of what these changes are going to be uh thanks to uh private freaky on reddit he actually is the one who did these in a bullet port st- a bullet point style um and we're going to kind of cover them that way um so let's see early on what they're talking about at the beginning of these things is kind of how the camping is going to work and how your game's going to work so a couple of them are the tents are in the camp are going to be upgradable uh you can unlock new features for them uh, their example is dutch tent unlocks a fast travel map that's actually cool yeah um talk to your gang members during horse rides i actually w- i mean it's cool that you can do that i hope that they don't do this thing where they're constantly it's trying repetitive. yes or where they're trying to give you exposition like one of the best things god of war did was that when you were doing something and then you got off of your horse and they stopped talking you're like oh man i'm gonna miss that story just because it's happened but then when you got on the boat later he picked back up and it was like oh that's awesome you said got off your horse Oh, get out of the boat. You know what yeah. I mean. But my point is, if you get off the horse and they stop talking, when you get back on the horse later, I really hope that this dynamic picks back up, if it's something that's worth hearing. I hope it's not just a bunch of weird dead stuff like the dead, because I've seen Grand Theft Auto V stuff where they just say the most random stuff, and it's like, 
they're almost talking just to talk. Right. And I don't like that. One of my favorite things about Final Fantasy 15, and I think I've mentioned this recently, is the fact that sometimes when you're riding in the car, it's it was just, just silent. silent. Yeah. And that's like the most realistic aspect of that entire game. It's like a lot of times when people are riding in cars, definitely during a road trip, you're not going to talk. You're just going to be sitting there taking in the surroundings. So that's interesting. Uh, gang members also lose loot bodies after a fight. That's kind of interesting. I think it's cool that your gang will actually be able to get stuff. I wonder if that means that your gang has a value or if you if they pick stuff up and it goes towards you. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, you can sing songs with gang members. That's interesting. You have to share a portion of your loot with the camp via donations. That's also interesting uh, because it means that you can't just decide to go off and be on your own. You have to be part of your gang. Um, the camp is optional, so it isn't a big cousin that wants to go bowling. That's good. <laughs> Uh, the allies flank and give covering fire. Fire, That's cool. Morale is important. Alcohol raises morale. This is where we're getting into these semi-based things, right? So if morale is important, how important is it? And how much will it affect the game if I choose to completely forego that? What if I don't want to give my people drunk? What if I don't want to camp that often? They're saying that it's not required. But if, if having the morale up is going to have a, a negative impact, impact on me if I don't go towards the game thing of this... That again, that's why I say it starts to take away from people who maybe didn't want this level of detail. And right. I think that that's interesting. Now, of course, the details in and of themselves are interesting. I think it's cool to have an idea of, well, here's morale. Of course, getting drunk and getting your problems away are going to help with morale. Definitely in the Wild West when that was obviously what people would do. they drink and that's how they did stuff. Um, but that's interesting. It says keeping the camp happy will give benefits. I'm hoping that that's what it's saying with morale. Morale's tied into happiness in general. Uh, and that's what matters. And that it'll give hidden benefits, but... The way they worded it does make it interesting. So could be a translation error with these. Um, so that's interesting. I'm not going to go over the story necessarily because I don't necessarily think that that goes into my, my topic point. Uh, here's a here's a different one. So Arthur, which I think is apparently going to be like your main character. Don't really know how that works. Uh, it says Arthur can swim, but not very well. Interesting. Uh, Arthur has to wear the right clothing for weather or suffer stamina penalties. Again, that's really cool. This is something that I like. I don't know that everyone's going to like this because can you easily change clothes? Can you do it on the fly? Do you have to stop somewhere? Do you have to visit somewhere to change? How realistic are they pushing this? Is this something you can do from your inventory? You you would expect so, but maybe some people don't even want to go that far. They want to deal with it. They don't want to have to think about it. Some people just want to play the game and not do that. Still, cool aspect. Uh, removing bandana. This is actually really cool, uh, and this is something that I liked about Assassin's Creed Liberation. So that was the the three spinoff for Vita. Removing bandana after committing a crime makes the wanted level go away faster. The way that that ties into Assassin's Creed is on Liberation, and I wish that other games would have done this. Uh, you had a persona that you could do. So you could be this princess chick that you actually were. Uh, you could be uh, in, like, slave clothes because of the way that the timing was uh, so that people wouldn't recognize, and you could do that. Or you could walk around as an assassin. And when you did stuff as any of these, you could build up a reputation. But if you killed people as an assassin, you started getting wanted levels, you could go and switch into your princess thing, walk around town, pull down your wanted level, your wanted posters, and you'd be it would lower your risk of getting caught. That's a cool aspect. I like that a lot. This is something that makes me want to play the game more. Uh, Saul, did you play the first one a lot or, or not? Red Dead? Yeah. Yeah. You, okay. I don't know what they mean by this necessarily. No more full outfits, but full customization. So, like, there's no more outfits as in a, a full outfit. So, you don't literally equip it as a full out outfit, but instead you get to go, well, I want this shirt with these pants and these shoes. Piece yeah. by piece, yeah. Gotcha. So, realistically, there's just not an easy option to equip everything at once. Sure. Uh, layered clothing. Well, I think. That's what it sounds like to me, too, but I was curious. Uh, layered clothing, which makes me just think that you can have a jacket and a shirt and they're individual. That's actually cool. Uh, tuck your pants into your boots, wear belts over clothing, roll up your sleeves. These are just things that, again, from a... This is more small detail of how do you want your character to look? How much do you want to dive into this fantasy? Do you want to role play and say, well, hey, my guy stepped in some mud. Uh, his pant legs are... Or he, he's going to go get in some mud, so he wants to roll his pants into his boots so they don't get... You Muddy, know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a, it's an added level that I think that Saul will really appreciate because he likes to role play in, in games. So It since, certainly makes me more excited for this game. Yeah, since this game is almost becoming an RPG at this level... Uh, you know, very RPG-like in some sense, and then also sim-like. I think that that'd be something cool. Uh, let's see. These are this is where it starts getting into more interesting stuff. And we did talk about this. Arthur can get fat or skinny, so eat healthy and exercise. So again, very San Andreas. And from what I've seen on one thing, it looks like you might have to eat. Like there's going to be more real survival mechanics. And if you have to eat, this is gonna be weird because that's not San Andreas. San Andreas, no. you could eat because you wanted to make yourself fat, just because. Right. And you could go work out because you wanted to make yourself muscular, just because. But it comes down to, though, is the game never forced you to do any of these things. So while we've seen Rockstar 
mm, what do you want to say experiment with these ideas before depending on how they actually are introducing them in here and some of this is based off of conjecture we don't quite know these are things that we're going to learn as the game eventually comes out we're not far from it so the october release right 20 20th 20, yeah 20th or 25th um so yeah we're not far at all man we're less than a month away from the game um or not less than, but around a month away from uh, uh, the game. So these are other small things. Uh, Arthur can get dirt under his fingernails. Uh, Arthur mirrors reflects, and Arthur will make comments. You're getting old Arthur. Again, small level of detail. Uh, you can lose your hat, but it will spawn on your house. Horse. <laughs> horse. Okay. I'm glad. Cause I was like, wait, what? Spawn on your horse. That's cool. You can wear dead animals as hats. That's interesting. Uh, you can take a bath. I wonder if smell is going to matter or if it's just a bath because you want to do it. Beards grow when you have to groom them. Barbers do a better job than you. Why do you have to groom them? Or can you groom them? This is the part that, again... Saying, I think that means you have to groom them to, like... You have to groom them to give, get them shorter again. Sure. Like they grow that would be cool. And that's something that the Witcher did. I know you didn't get into the Witcher 3 a lot, but if you cut your hair or cut your beard, they grew back on their own in real time. No, I know that. Uh, I think yeah, some people didn't if you didn't play them enough. Yeah. It was a cool aspect, and I'm glad they're doing it here again. Um interesting to see hair will keep growing you can kind of keep it cut and what's going to be really cool about that is that you get a real feeling for how long you've played based off of that like if if i go in the game and just cut all my hair off just so i can see how long i've played by the time that i play for 40 hours i'm like man i got a crazy mop on my head and i've got this beard again this is crazy you know yeah um it's a it's an interesting way to kind of roll through that uh, then again, that's assuming that there's not a limit of how long your hair can grow before it just stops i it feel like there probably is. probably is yeah um even though, man, how next gen would this game be feeling if it didn't stop? Your just hair kept growing endlessly. That would be uh, pretty wild. I'm glad you don't. Your nails don't just continue to grow. Ugh, Ugh. that'd be gross. Uh, let's see, lightning strikes, which could hit you. Again, something that is a cool detail. I could see this actually pissing people off. Oh yeah, dude, it made me so mad. <laughs> Breath of the Wild. You had to, oh, you had to really watch out for that. All right, so now we're going to go into the AI NPCs. Those are the things that matter the most, it seems like. Those are the things that are going to be the most semi is what you do with your own character. Now, of course, there's things like morale and stuff that is semi, but it's not based around you. It's more based around your congregation and your community and your group. I could see that. Um, NPCs, this is going into that too, though. NPCs remember behavior. Example, NPC remembered Arthur helping him after a snake bite. Cool. And I hope that that really is true because I've seen this. You see some evidence of this in some games, but if they can take it a step further, that's even cooler. Uh, a farmer will behave differently than a sheriff. Again, cool. Makes sense. Sheriff's going to have a, a whole different daily routine than what a farmer would. And they're going to have a different outset and, and basic personality that's attached to their jobs. And since working at that point was more or less what you did to live, you had to. That pulls together. I like that. These are nice touches. NPCs comment if you're dirty, uh, dirty or bloody. So we do know that bath, bathing does apparently mean something. You can talk with every NPC and they remember your conversations. That's cool. NPCs put bounties on your head and bounty hunters will come after you. So apparently if you wrong them, that's actually a cool aspect too. Uh, but again, does that not some, I mean, it does and doesn't that is somewhat similar to what you'd expect from like Grand Theft Auto where you do something and then you get a bounty on you. Basically you get a, you get a star and oh, you no, keep you, going up through your stars. Well, no, you can do that in Grand Theft Auto. Like if you, if you were playing online, you can get killed by a teammate and then, they put can, up an amount of money and put a bounty on them. Then the whole lobby will try to go kill sure. them. Sure, and online-wise, that's awesome. Now, yeah. for people who don't want to play online, I wonder, you know, it's, it's just don't how that's going to... the wrong NPC. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, you know, some people play those games just to go do mindless killing. Yeah, so now, so now this is not going to be If every NPC you. happens, yeah, this is not going to be the game for you. This is not it. Uh, let's see. Uh, NPCs react to environment and lean on things. That's cool. In, most NPCs have terrible dental hygiene. Why does that matter? Immersion. Immersion. <laughs> uh, all NPCs have schedules, which is not that surprising. People are acting like that's crazy. Skyrim had schedules. Oblivion had. Oh, well, no, Oblivion didn't have schedules. Because, Skyrim did. Oblivion yeah. didn't. People just sit. No, yeah. But they'd walk, but it was like a path. Oblivion and that was tried it. to have schedules, but then something kept happening in the game's development that, like, it proved that their NPCs were too advanced for that. As I think it was that they didn't have enough memory for the path to stay. Yeah. Uh, Cause they wouldn't basically, they didn't act right. I do remember that. It was a cool aspect. Oh, yeah, that, but Skyrim it, had full on schedules. You could just literally sit there and wait and just keep waiting. And you would see people walk away, go to their house, sleep, wake repeated. up, come back. And it was like, and, and every day they'd have a different uh, routine every day. Well, they were normally similar, but every day, if it was like a NPC that had a store, they'd have a different, um, um, Lord, supply, whatever you want to yeah. call it. They did have a different inventory, uh, which was cool. So that's not that crazy, but of course, with going into this game, how far that goes is, could be potentially cool. Uh, AI maneuvers around you, seek cover, and even climb houses to gain the high ground. That's awesome. Uh, 
totally going to do some Star Wars stuff if I play that game. Uh, if you don't hit NPCs and vital organs, they might absorb multiple bullets. Again, this is interesting because this is a whole different idea to the to the idea of a bullet sponge. Yeah. Because now it's a bullet sponge for a reason. Right. Now it's not a bullet sponge just because you're not hitting it. Uh, because it wants you to hit it so many times before it eventually go down. Now it's a bullet sponge because you're not hitting it right. Wonder how this is going to affect people's opinions. But dude, what a cool idea! Because that basically means that every NPC is going to have a bot, like a, an autonomy. Like it's, yeah. it's going to have. Okay, well, this is where the heart is. This is where the spleen is. This is where the lung is. You know, this is crazy. Uh, cool level of detail, and of course, it's coming from Rockstar, who take forever to develop games. So good at least we know that the time spent to develop this game is apparently gone towards something whether it goes towards their benefit or not sounds like it's going to go towards their benefit um let's see if you don't uh, npcs might fall to the ground but get back up to surprise you cool hand-to-hand combat is more dynamic faces deform after getting hit black eyes bruises broken lips that's cool uh people groan when i, I didn't i've never heard that word spelled out like, you know i've never seen it spelled people groan when crouching or picking stuff up that's not that's not the right no that's that's it's G R O A N. Ha. Found a error. Animal cruelty is a crime. Shoot a dog and someone will tell the sheriff. Thank you. Good job, Rockstar. That's what we needed. Uh, when you join a group of conversation, they will talk about you too. That's cool. So if you just walk up to them instead of it just being like, Oh, I got an arrow on my knee or something, they'll actually like acknowledge you. That's yeah, they'll cool. Pull you in the conversation. That's a nice aspect. Uh Saul, is there anything else that stands out to you that you want to talk about? Uh, well, the horse, the horse does have a lot of stuff, and this is interesting. If you want to cover the horse stuff and see what you think about it, um, but also, and, and we can kind of branch out into the conversation of how we think these things are going to matter, and how much they make your own interest in the game grow or shrink, and how much you think it'll affect the general consensus's idea about how the game's going to, you know, how the game will. I think it's going to perform well either way, but what will the lasting impact be? Are people actually going to love it? I think people um, are going to love it. I, think I do too. I think that a lot of this stuff has um, basically mechanics that people actually will seek out mods for Skyrim and Fallout for. Like, it's in this game without having that mod. Now, it's not going to be for everybody. That is for certain. Um, a lot that's of why stuff, I think, because not all of it seems to be optional. Right. We don't know for sure, and I am curious to see. But I, doubt, it, I doubt any of this stuff is optional. I, I, like this amount of stuff, there's not going to be options to go through there and turn this stuff off. Okay, there is one thing I wanted to talk about that was actually pretty interesting. It's not, uh, it's, it's, I think it was in the gameplay section. Um, this goes, again, this goes back into the idea of simming this. So this is actually something good to cover. You have to pull back the hammer before you can fire. Now, see, now that's something I'm curious. Is that a time related uh, button press or is that a like, I have to hit R1 then R2 to fire? I, I would imagine that's probably what it is, but I mean, you don't. Way again, I'm fine you don't with. Know. Yeah, either way, I'm fine with. Um, yep. Uh, when when hit, you can gain a limp and lose stamina again. And other this games is have very that. grueling like, on you. Well, that's crippling in Fallout games. Sure, and I'm it's, not saying, but how long does it last? And do you have to heal right. yourself before it'll go away, or does it do with a Far Cry way where it just eventually goes away? Right. And see, like I like the like movable dead bodies, trackable animals. Uh, shoot horses so they throw off their rider. A lot of this stuff is going to be what I think is a, an ingredient list for what is going to end up being a very, very fine game with all of this in it. Yeah, I do think that a lot of people who... I think that there is a little bit of a mix-up, though, when you are thinking of the typical players for this game because the typical players for this game does, doesn't share uh, the same... Um, enthusiasm as they do for Grand Theft Auto. So like now what well, do you what do you mean? A lot of people who compare the fans of Red Dead are comparing them to Grand Theft Auto fans saying that they're the same thing. When in reality they're Oh, yeah, I'm not fans I, of Red Dead are a little different and sure. it's, it's a separate like it's a whole separate fan base. Like there's but, obviously a shared pool because yeah. like Blake is a perfect example, right? Captain Chronic. Well, so is Ryan. Uh, yeah, they're a perfect example of people who just play both of them even though they're wildly different games. At some point, they're just fans of Rockstar. Then you have people that are fans of Rockstar, but they're fans of Rockstar because of being right. fans of Red Dead. And I think, so there is an overlap, obviously. Yeah. There I, is an overlap. And I think that with the way this game is going to work, I think that it's... I mean, to me, this is perfect. Like I'm going to play this game for a really long time now, given that there's this much stuff in the game that you can kind of find out. Well, and like you again, you would know this because you played five way more than I did, um, Grand Theft Auto. But Grand Theft Auto took some lessons from from Red Dead, even though Red Dead came after Grand Theft Auto Four. You yeah. know what I mean? These games kind of do lean on each other and grow from each other in similar ways, but they find ways to do it across what's going to make sense in an old style West game, and and then taking those same same thought processes behind the ideas but flipping them to how that's going to work in a more modern standing uh so we see that going down so that's why i do think to some extent 
my bigger thing was like, okay, so how long has it been since Red Dead Redemption? 2010, right? Yeah, so almost a decade. Eight so years. eight years. In that eight years, let's say that they're not Grand Theft Auto fans and they are just Red Dead fans. Well, gaming has come a long way, but is this what they wanted? That's, that's, that's what I think is interesting. I think that most people are going to be fine, but I'm wondering if people are going to be disappointed because it's too much. I mean, I could see a couple people like that. I don't think a massive a mass amount of yeah, people Yeah, I don't like think it'll that. be a massive amount either. I think, Like I say, and what's funny is I think the game will sell the, probably the same either way, but will it be remembered in the same sense if people start to find these weird quibbles with the way that they chose to do this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's my biggest, like potential thing the the game is really hyped right now and for the people that aren't as glued into this stuff as we are they're probably not even going to see this stuff if they do they may not quite understand that it's that is is or isn't optional which we don't even know right now and they're probably going to buy the game anyway because they're just buying they're they're buying into the hype that they've created because they're longtime fans or because they're rockstar fans or because gaming in general tends to hype rockstar and even though they're not rockstar fans they're ready to try a rockstar game uh th- those are all potential things that could happen uh, but they may not remember it as well because they, they're playing and they're like, well, I didn't necessarily like that the game made me do this or made me do that. Uh, and I don't know that that's going to really have a big impact. I know that this all seems like stuff that when I think about my friends who love Rockstar, even though Rockstar hasn't traditionally gone this crazy with it, I can easily tell that most of the people that I know are going to be okay with this, that love Rockstar. It's like, even though the games aren't usually the semi me and you play other games that have this kind of semi stuff. And I know Blake does too, where it's like, Oh, but we know that we like it. And it adding into this game just adds to the experience for us. But does it take away for other people? And I think that that puts this game in a curious spot because it's almost like the entire, we know that they're known for detail, right? One of the things in here says a dollar is as mu- is worth as much as it was in 1899. Oh, yeah. That's the detail that we expect. The bodies from do not de- decompose, but instead they, uh, they, they attract yeah, vultures yeah, and stuff like scavengers, that. Yeah, yeah. That's, crazy see a lot of this makes me curious as to how like who how is, are they running that first of well, all well who is, if everybody who, who dies falls to the ground and says sure sure i like, mean i don't know hold like, on I, I can i can go and find it this was more like a roundup of everything that we that they've recently put out and this is between previews and actual videos gotcha, and impressions and stuff it, just, like that. it sounds like this isn't a game because of how the amount of stuff in it. like this sounds so exactly good. right but the, the thing is is that it sounds too good to be true but then whenever you tell people that and they go no uh, if i just walked up to you and i started listing all these things off to you and i didn't tell you it was about red dead and i didn't say anything that made you think it was red dead and i was like hey look man we're, th- somebody's making a wild west game and they're gonna do this this and this and this you'd be like no there's no way they're gonna do all that they can't no yeah. but then if i go what if Rockstar Games made it? And suddenly, because of the the reputation they have, it's a complete switch. People are like, maybe they can. Yeah, it makes sense, too, because like Rockstar is the way they are. But this is mighty. This is a lot. And, and my this is the thing for me. It's so close to release that I can't imagine that this stuff is going to be false. Or maybe we're just maybe the way that we're reading it, we're giving it expectations or head that even though it's in the game, it's not in the way that we're picturing it. That's a potential. But I think what's funny is, you know what this what this reading these gives me the vibe of Fable, Fable Two. Yeah, when it's like, yeah. oh yeah, you're gonna be able to go to your friend's town and have sex no with his wife Scott. and give her a and, yeah, exactly. Can you play with your friends? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Or and like, oh yeah, there's gonna be this many varied uh, biomes. But when the game actually launched, there wasn't water planets. You couldn't go underwater uh, in your ship. You still can't go underwater in your ship, even though one of the first No Man's Sky scenes showed the ship coming out of the water. You know what I mean? These are things that you when you look at it. You get lied to so many times for games, definitely when they're trying to do this ambitious of stuff, that it's hard to read this and not be taken back. I, you just kind of like, I'm keeping my reservations because I feel like this can't all be true. See, that's, but, that's what I'm curious about. If this is all true, is this day one buy for you? I don't know, man. See, it is for me. Because it's t- timing. What else is coming out that I'm going to play? I mean, if uh, nothing, then in, sure. In October, there's uh, Battlefield, Battlefield and Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm not Battlefield getting. and Call of Duty. And that's what I may do is I may end up taking my Battlefield, I'm not Battlefield, Call of Duty um, pre order and swapping it over to this and then paying this all the way off, uh, like trading in Injustice and um, something else I had at home that I was going to trade in. But um, yeah, like I'm, I'm super excited for it. I'm, we're going to post the link of this article in the comments. 
something fun that I wanted to do is that either in our community curated topics for Discord, or not community curated, uh, the open topic discussion, I want you guys to pinpoint one bullet in each of these categories and comments for YouTube do the same thing. Tell me what you're most excited about. Yeah, we'll, we'll link this uh, and we'll link the article that we're reading that has it listed. And uh, yeah, because there's a lot. There's a, there's a there's lot a of lot. stuff we didn't cover. Like if we were to read every bullet point, then we would be here for another hour. Yeah. There's, there's probably at least another 200 bullet points in there. Uh, so Okay, I, like one more. And this is not as crazy as it would be in a game like Grand Theft Auto. All buildings are enterable. This is now, the Wild West. Now, I will say this is the Wild West. This is going to be like little towns with like four buildings in each town, yeah. five buildings, six buildings. I don't think we're going to, I don't think that is something. But yeah, they said that for Grand Theft Auto 6. Can you imagine? Like if it was, if it was as condensed as Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah, is. let's just say that it's the same exact map. And it's not going to be. Let's just say that it was the same exact map. Do you really truly believe they could make every single building enterable? And and not, even with that technology, not anytime soon. I mean, they could, but it'd probably look like a Nintendo sixty four game. Well, I mean, probably not. It probably, no, it'd probably no look NPCs. like a PS three game. Really, it looked like when you go inside to the couple of areas in Grand Theft Auto four. I, I, I think you really underestimate how many places there are on Grand Theft Auto five that you that looks Maybe. like you could go into. Maybe every to be building honest. has a door on it. <laughs> so, like, if I can go to every building, that'd be dope. But I don't think we're going to get to that point really. You can also lie, though. Every building's enterable, but can I go to every single room that's in that building? No. See? See, now that's... Now, what, what if you could, though? Like, it, yeah, mind blown? Like, again, that's what I'm saying. It gets to be interesting because it's like, okay, well, maybe I can go into this pub, but maybe four of the rooms are locked because there's nothing actually rendered inside of them to make sure the game runs correctly. Yeah. And like, that's, you know... I, I was already super excited for this game. It was already a day one purchase for me. Um, I was going to plan on going up there to GameStop when I'm off this week and then just pre-ordering and paying it off. Now it's more of like I'm going to not even worry about Call of Duty and get this instead because this I feel like can take up a lot of time. And between this and Destiny and then the end of the year, realistically, like I'm pretty set. Like I don't think I have to really worry about any other massive See, release. What's funny is I didn't have interest in buying this game, but with the fact that the release schedule, because originally October uh, or was it September? Originally, I was going to have games left over from September. I wanted to play into October. Yeah, like we were, uh, but we, everything moved off. Right, we were thinking that Spider Man and um, uh, what's the uh, Code Vein? Code Vein left. Yes, uh, Code, Code Vein left. Spyro left. Those are games that I was like, okay, these are a lot at once. But the upside is because October is mostly stuff I don't want. I can continue playing in October. Yeah. Uh, well, the problem with that now is the only thing that I can see going in October is stuff I'm already playing or or stuff I'm about to buy, like apparently the incredibly long Hollow Knight. And I mean, it's not incredibly long. You were saying that you played it for like at least twenty hours, uh, forty hours, but that's not incredibly long. For an indie game that costs $15, that's pretty that's, damn that's long. That's about how much time I'll put into it. And, like, you may be, I'm not going to say, like, you may not explore as much as I did. I'm I'm normally pretty bad about, okay, I'm going to go explore anyway. Because then, if then, I don't yeah. feel like I'm supposed to go this way, I'm going to go ahead and go that way. Yeah, every nook and cranny. And for me, uh, the first couple hours of the game, I couldn't, I didn't realize that uh, Cornifer sold you maps of the area. So like, so you were lost in them. Lost. And, and yeah. And like, I would go down to a spot. I'm like, have I been in here before? And I, but, I would have to explore the rule. The for the ti- even then though, for the type of game it is for it to be 15, $20. I think it's $15. Yeah. It's for, totally worth it, dude. How is the, even 20 hours? is surprising. Guacamelee was 20 bucks and it was like eight hours. Eight hours yeah. Which is great. It's a great game, and there's, it doesn't outstay its welcome. But. There's a duck with a toupee and a, and a maraca. It's not a toupee. It's a oh lord. Why would you say that? It's a uh, is it beanie. Well, no. What, what do they call the the sombrero? That's what it is. That is not a sombrero. If you look at it, it is. It's just a, it's a rubber ducky. I've had that forever. Blaze got that for me for my birthday in 2011. <sighs> wow. Yep. Well, you guys, let us know what y'all think. We want to make this kind of more of a community oriented topic. Like, I want to see. I want to see what all you're excited for. And with the announcement of Red Dead Online. Uh, it, are you how much of this carries over in online? Yeah. How, 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 uh, are you see? So like, imagine this, imagine we get me, you, Liam, Richard, we get a lot of people. We have like a random bang, like a randing rove of like cowboys just coming, like destroying everything. <laughs> Tell me that would not be fun. See, but that, that that's, this game is going to be so easy to pull off just going because Grand Theft Auto just doesn't interest me in any sense. Like, It'd be hard for me to buy it just for online because it's still expensive and because even the online was off-putting to me when I was playing. This is a little bit more along what I would actually like to see. I don't Because it's easy jumping out of compared to online. Yeah, and I think that with what it's aiming to do, if that really is something that we can do, totally, man. And if, the, if what they're saying, even if I don't enjoy the story that much, which I'm sure it's going to be good. I'm yeah. not judging and it. Don't I just forget. don't know. Yeah, I say we got Ryan and Josh and we got other people. We, 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 you know what? The Triangle we, Squared crew. We talked about having like... 
uh, like like Saul versus Brett Wars. We could have like Cowboys versus like Indian Wars. And like have like ten people. <laughs> we all, all dress on side. similarly on different sides yeah, so that we know who the enemies are. Every single multiplayer battle, that'd be fun. I doubt you could do that in this game, but you know, I don't know. But if you could, woo, boy. All right, yeah. Let us know what you think about it. Look into the uh, look into the article that we are linking, uh, and just see all of it. It's it's a serious wealth of stuff. It's, it is. It's, it's so much, uh, but. You know, what's funny about this, though, is that this all this information is standing to do is make me actually probably buy this game, when originally it wasn't even on my radar. I didn't intend to buy it at all. And now I'm actually seriously debating, like, why not get it day one? There's nothing yeah. else? Empty. Empty space. I could play a number of other games, but why not? Yeah. You know, and, and everyone else just, is going to be playing it anyway. So, and I mean, if all these are like, if this is true, which I'm sure, that I'm, I'm not going to say I'm sure it is. Then this might actually be game of the year. First of all, well, I, I will say like that is a weird contender is to have this as game of the year, which was previously something I had had in the back of my mind as it could be because I love the first one. But with this one, I'm like, this could be. But just to buy the game to experience this stuff that sure. works in the game. Yeah. Sixty dollars just to try all this crazy potential stuff is not that crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's reasonable. But let us know what you think. Uh, and of course, like I said, if you watch this on YouTube and you liked it, subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Uh, let us know your thoughts down below. We like to look forward to hearing. We look forward to hearing you, from you people, and we like to uh, respond to it and give our thoughts on stuff. And of course, the Discord is where we're most active. You can always find us there. But we try and respond to everything we find everywhere. So until next week, Saul. I think this is it. This has been Triangle Squared. Anything you'd like to throw in? No, but thank you guys. Thanks.